But she didn't, Keswick guessed. Oh man, she didn't, Snapchat confirmed. Instead, she blamed the whole thing on me. That's when I stopped being a good guy and turned into a hood, yada yada yada. Sure enough, Beverly got mad at Pat Snapchat and kicked him out, saying that he can't come back until he learns to get along with Larry. Past Snaptrap stormed out and turned his back towards the house, not wanting any of them to see him cry. He was a sweetie pie who turned into a big fat hood. Hey, Snaptrap glared at the random rodents. Next time I hire backup singers, remind me to pay them after they sing. Right, Keswick agreed. Snaptrap then went back to singing. During this moment, Keswick saw images of Snaptrap with Ollie and Francisco and then robbing various places. Sometimes Birdbrain and or Chameleon would show up and help out. These are other villains from Tough Puppy. What about Lalari? Keswick asked. Never counted him as part of the group, Snaptrap scowled. Beverly made him work with me so that we'd learn to get along. Always had fun torturing him during the day though. Now Keswick saw past Snaptrap tossing his scarf onto the ground and walking away with his head down. Poor guy, Keswick said sympathetically. Tell me about it, Snaptrap looked away, not wanting to see any more of his past. A few minutes later, Beverly suddenly came outside as if she wanted to say something to past Snaptrap, but it was too late. He was gone. She then looked very upset, especially after she found past Snaptrap's scarf. She picked it up and went back inside, looking as if she was going to cry. Since Snapchat was looking away from the scene, he didn't see this. Keswick did, but before he could say anything... From that day on, I never trusted nobody again, Snapchat said angrily. And that nobody includes you. I forgot how much I hated Christmas. Thanks for reminding me, you dumb ghost. Snapchat was shaking Keswick up and down. You dumb ghost! You dumb ghost! You dumb... He stopped because he noticed that he was back in his bed and shaking one of his pillows. Huh, just a bad dream, Snaptrap realised. I must have ate some bad moogoo or something. He shrugged it off. He then curled up under the covers, only to sit up in fright upon hearing some bagging. Then, realising it was just some nearby shutters or something, he scowled at his cowardice and went back under the covers. Let's go to sleep, he muttered. Bah humbug! Chapter 7 Snap Traps Present Meanwhile, author, stop beginning chapters with the same word every time. This is starting to get old. Dudley and Kitty were pacing in the secret room where they had first planned, waiting for Keswick to return. Finally, they heard screaming. After watching the usual magic stuff they saw when they first activated the pin, Keswick appeared on his back, still in his Ghost of Christmas Past outfit. Remind me to tell Chief to limit the theatrics on his devices and concentrate his magic more uncomfortable to travelling, Keswick muttered, massaging his backside. So how did it go, Keswick? Kitty asked. Oh, not good. Snaptrap is madder than ever, Keswick frowned. I mean, I didn't know he had such a bad past. A lot of us had bad things happen in our pasts, but we didn't all turn out evil, Dudley shrugged. Oh yeah? What about being betrayed by a family member? Dudley and Kitty looked at each other with shock. Oh dear, no wonder he's the way he is, Kitty said. Yeah, I'd hate to find out how I'd react if a family member ever betrayed me, Dudley agreed. However, it turns out that particular family member still cares about him, Keswick said. Snaptrap just never knew. Well, we'll tell Snaptrap about that later, Dudley said. But Dudley, there's only an hour and a half left until Christmas, Kitty said. I know, Kitty. That's why we've got to unleash part two of the miracle, Dudley smiled. It's your turn now. Finally, Kitty smiled. A storm started to brew especially around this island near the coast of Petropolis. Petropolis's version of Alcatraz, I presume. It wasn't an ordinary storm, however. That's right, Honcho was conjuring it with a spell. Cue Tim Curry voice. Come ye storms and grow in strife, split the sky with lightning rife, strike at midnight like a knife, and bring to my creation... Life! 
Christmas is finished, Honcho cried evilly. Finished, he then cackled. Meanwhile, Snaptrap was now deeply asleep, at least until he heard a dinging noise. He then woke up partially, a little startled. Then another dinging noise caused him to bolt upright. Ah, another ghost, he panicked. Then he noticed they left the TV on. The dinging sound was just coming from the trolley on the TV. Bah, stupid dreams, he scowled, turning the TV off. Then he heard a weird roaring sound. He panicked again, cowering under the covers, but then decided to check out the noise. He looked under the bed and saw a weird multi-limbed creature. It turned out to be just a cockroach who skittered past Snaptrap's snout. Snaptrap face palmed. Okie dokie. Maybe some music will get my mind off this ghost nonsense, he muttered. He turned on the radio and prepared to fall back asleep. Locally, a sudden low pressure system has hit the Bay Area, causing unexpected storm clouds, a familiar looking female voice said. At the tone, the time will be... Past your bedtime, Snaptrap! Snaptrap bolted upright, startled. Snaptrap! he gasped. A bonging sound was heard. Another bell! he panicked. No! No more ghosts! No more ghosts, do you hear me? He tried turning off the radio, but couldn't. This isn't happening! It was happening. A black gloved hand reached through the radio and pulled Snaptrap into it. Snaptrap screamed as he went through the radio. Larry then opened the bedroom door. Did you call? he asked. Snaptrap? Yoo-hoo! Hmm, must have gone out for more junk food. He shut the bedroom door. Snaptrap continued yelling until he landed on some sort of floor. What is this place? he asked. Some radio tubes started to light up. <sighs> I don't like this. Anyone here? Snaptrap started following the tubes until he reached a black area. Then, a bright white light appeared. It was a woman with black hair and pointed ears wearing a white gown and a crown of lights. Upon closer inspection, the crown turned out to be a wreath with candles on it. L -l -l Look, lady, I'd like to go home now, Snaptrap said nervously. Okay, please. I am the ghost of Christmas present, the woman, actually Kitty, said. Touch my robe. Snaptrap did. Nice, is this a cotton blend? he asked. Follow me. We have scenes of holiday joy to visit, Kitty said. No, 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 I hate Christmas! <laughs> Snaptrap waved his paws. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Oh, come on, you big baby. Kitty pointed to a scene that was nearing itself to them. Behold, a familiar sight. The scene was of Larry testing a blowtorch on some metal scraps in the basement. Hey, this is my play, Snaptrap realised. I don't celebrate no holiday joy. No, but someone else does, Kitty said, annoyed at Snaptrap's obliviousness. Jingle bells, jingle bells, Larry sang as he continued testing the blowtorch. Jingle all the way. Larry? Snaptrap said with surprise. Larry didn't respond. At that point, the metal scraps got cut completely through. Oh, Boy, this baby will cut through bank safes like butter, Larry said happily. And it's monogrammed too. I hope Snaptrap likes it. A blowtorch? For me? I didn't know he cared, Snaptrap said, both touched and maybe a little regretful. And after the wrong way I've treated him too. Why would he do that? Meanwhile, the metal scraps fell on Larry. Snaptrap and Kitty didn't notice. Unlike you, he does try to get along with you, like your sister wanted, Kitty explained. Snaptrap looked a bit startled, but then he realised that Keswick must have told her about that. Plus, it makes him feel good, Kitty added. See? Larry was happily and randomly blasting the blowtorch everywhere. Snaptrap and Kitty just watched as Larry started to sing. Insert lyrics of Yuletide Fool here. Larry set the blowtorch on a dresser so that he could pull out some ribbon to wrap a box, but failed to make sure that the blowtorch was off first. The blowtorch burnt through the ribbon and then fell down and started burning the dresser. The fire then spread to a plush chair. Snaptrap let out a startled cry. The Christmas carol magic now took effect on the scene. It turned the fire, nice tenses bro, into an image of brass knuckles. 
and then a couple of fire reindeer came out of the fire brass knuckles and ran around Larry as he skipped toward a Christmas tree. The reindeer then hit the tree and caused a flash behind Larry. Larry was now by a punch bowl of eggnog, but that means it's not a punch bowl, which tipped over and caused him to float in a river of eggnog. Larry didn't even notice, he just grabbed a cup and took a sip of it. Now the river disappeared. Snaptrap was actually kind of freaking out because he had no idea that most of these images were caused by magic and weren't real at all. A Santa toy with a round bottom fell on Larry, but before Snaptrap could process that, the scene changed to Larry, Beverly and an unknown son that looked like Larry except with darker fur. Larry took a photo of him and his family and the flash caused the scene to switch to the island we saw Honcho on previously. Fourth wall break! Sure enough. He was still there, except this time his fire lice were with him. Much to Snaptrap's surprise, Honjo started singing too. Yeah, Snaptrap stopped being surprised at this point. Scaring a bird from her nest, giving a present to a fire louse that's actually just attacking outer space bugs? What? And actually sliding a toy store into the sea. Okay, anybody got some flea spray? I mean, really. No, that's not me commenting. That was actually written there. Also, I laugh, I cry, I totally lose my cool. Oh me, oh my, I'm a yuletide fool. Well, he got the fool part right. After all, I doubt someone who really does get emotional at Christmas time would destroy a rocking horse. Yes, that's also literally written in the story. I am not kidding. The fire lice cheered him on until he zapped them. Now the scene switched back to Larry. Larry was dancing out of an oven in a pie outfit, but soon lost his balance. A catalogue with images of cats wearing Santa hats and picked him up and flew him away. Now the scene showed both Honcho and Larry singing. Larry was on the oven and stove, and Honcho was on some part of the island by a destroyed wall. Now the scene revealed that Larry had set up a giant electric sign that read, Merry Christmas, Snap Trap. The whole area then became black. He's not such a bad guy, is he? Snaptrap said. I mean, I've known the little pest for years, but who knew? There's a lot you don't know, Kitty replied almost indignantly. What's that supposed to mean? Snaptrap frowned, offended. A giant building, they started moving towards them. Oh, not again, Snaptrap groaned. Fortunately, the building stopped with inches to spare. Snaptrap relaxed and then made a scoffing expression. Oh, brother, I've eaten in gas stations classier than this joint. He shook his head. He then looked through the window, but it was foggy, so he wiped a section of it clean. So what's the big draw here? he asked. Kitty made her own clean spot on the window so that she could look in. It's Timmy, she explained. There was Timmy, playing with a paddle ball while his foster sister Martha read. Now and then she looked up and smiled at him. Cute kid, Snapchat remarked. Looks kind of familiar too. After watching Timmy play for another minute, Snaptrap's memory came back. Hey, I remember this kid, he said. You should. You robbed him, Kitty scolded. Ah, the hair was only a few bucks. Snaptrap now was starting to feel bad. Meant for his operation, Kitty frowned. Snaptrap was surprised to hear this and felt even worse. He and Kitty went through the walls so they could get a closer look. It's, it's more than just a bum leg, he asked. Oh, wake up! Unless the future isn't changed somehow, Timmy will not make it. Timmy now saw a bone-shaped cookie in his stocking. Not wanting to wait, he made a ladder out of a step stool and some sturdy presents. He then started climbing to the top. Ha! Huh. Five to one says he makes it, Snaptrap chuckled, watching this. Look at him, he's a scrapper like me. a boy.